Hi everybody, uh, welcome to this Royal Voluntary Service um, broadcast. My name is Ollie. Um, I'm from the charity Vegetarian for Life. I've done a few of these videos um, before, so last year I did a couple. Uh, so some of you may have been to those. If not, um, I'll just talk a bit about the, the charity. Um, we are a charity that supports older vegetarians and vegans, as anyone over the age of 50. Um, and through, through grants and um, through pen, pen pal schemes and um, recipe ideas and also cookery sessions like this. Um, so it's not just for vegetarians and, and vegans, pe people who want to reduce meat or um, yeah, look into for health reasons or, or, or various reasons. So um, yeah, don't feel excluded if you're not a vegetarian or vegan. Um, but this session in particular is about is a, a veganuary session. So um, so yeah, people who, who may be going vegan just for January or um, perhaps you yeah you want to reduce meat for um, health reasons or ethical reasons or whatever. So it's for everyone basically is what I'm trying to say. Um, so today I'm going to make some burgers and uh, some sweet potato fries. And I'm also going to make a quick homemade ketchup to go with that. Um, the burgers are chestnuts and mushroom burgers. They're really meaty and moist. Um, so like a really good kind of um, replacement for meaty burgers uh, without buying sort of really processed ones. And I mean, they're everywhere these days. You can go to uh, McDonald's have just started doing one. So this is sort of uh, an easy home alternative to that. Um, and sweet potato fries, a bit healthier, and I'm going to try and make sort of thin, crispy fries. Um, but obviously, you can make wedges and whatever you fancy as well. Um, so, yeah, I get started. I've got my oven on, quite hot, 220 degrees. Um, I've got a large baking tray that's lined uh, with some baking paper. And then, the first thing to do is finish peeling my sweet potato. So this is quite a small one. And it'll probably make a good tray at least of uh, thin fries. So sweet potatoes are a bit healthier for you. Uh, I mean some people think they're a superfood. You can tell by the colour they're full of carotenoids and antioxidants, strong antioxidants good for freeing, getting rid of free radicals in the body and um, repair and, and damage. And you can always tell by the colour. But they're good for you. Less starchy than a, a white potato. Let's get rid of that. So, nice peeled sweet potato. And then I'm just going to Try and make sort of half a centimetre to a centimetre thick pieces. I should say as well, if you want to ask any questions, I can have a look in the chat and, uh, and answer them while I go along. I'll also have a look at the end. So lots of people saying good morning. So yeah, good morning to you. And then go through the whole potato, just the same. What we'll do, we'll turn around those slices and go the other way. So we've got slices like that, and then I'm going to lay them flat and then go the other way. We should have nice sort of French fry size pieces, like so. A bit fat, those ones. Probably make them a little bit thinner. Just do the same with all the other pieces. So kind of matchstick size ones. You can also make skin on fries. Definitely a lot better for you. The um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, nutrients in the, the skin of the potato as well. I just gave them a good scrub with a, a brush. That's all you need to do, really. So let's just do a few more of these. That should 
be enough for now. Put that aside for another day. And then I'm gonna chop them in a bowl. And sprinkle them with some corn flour. You could also use arrowroot as well, less commonly found, but does the same job. So half, about half a tablespoon of corn flour, and then a good pinch of salt. I like to use sea salt, a good pinch of sea salt. going to massage that corn flour in and then a tablespoon of olive oil and you can also add other things in here um, flavorings uh, paprika I'm going to use just some hot and smoky chipotle. Just a little grind of that. And then onto the baking tray. And what I want to do is make sure I don't have any powdery bits of corn flour left. I want to massage all the fries. So they get a nice even coating and what this will do will help crisp up the fries. So just get your hands in there, give them a good massage and then make sure they're all distributed evenly onto the tray so you haven't got any on top of each other and you've got some nice space between them into the hot oven and I'm going to put the tray quite close to the top about 15 20 centimeters from the top on the top shelf for between 10 to 20 minutes let's see if you've got any questions so far yeah so that's a question from Karen um, 220 fan, yes, so um, if you don't have a fan you can um, increase the temperature a little bit, so very hot, you want them to be nice and, and crispy. Okay, let's get rid of this rubbish. And then the next thing we're going to do is start the burgers. So I've got some nice chestnut mushrooms, again, giving them a good scrub. Um, 150 grams of mushrooms. Uh, some people like to wash the mushrooms, but um, they can go a bit sort of squidgy. I tend to just give them a, a nice, a nice scrub, and um, you could even peel them if you want. And I'm just going to chop these quite roughly, so just taking off the stalk. And then in like that, just lost a bit. And then just literally handle on top of the blade, random sort of um, pieces, random side pieces. Doesn't need to be too neat because this is going to get blended with some other ingredients. Mushrooms are really good for um, kind of replicating a sort of meaty texture. They're also um, got quite a bit of, sort of B12 and uh, vitamin D as well, which is something you will generally get from animal sources. So quite good for a vegetarian and vegan diet. Sort of texture. There we go. 
So just some roughly chopped pieces. And I'm going to pop this in a bowl. Cloves of garlic, give it a little crush, and then the uh, peel will come off straight away. Again, just some rough shaped pieces, quite small, so you can get your blade in there and sort of really uh, chop it quite finely. into the bowl as well. And we're going to give this a really good season. Black pepper, so good with mushrooms. So, a lot of black pepper. And a good pinch of salt again. And then I'm going to use some dried thyme. teaspoon of dried thyme. Thereabouts. And then a teaspoon of cumin. So lovely pungent cumin. It really doesn't dominate uh, these burgers, just lends a lovely flavour. And then we'll give that a good mix. Nice glug of olive oil. You could use other oils as well. Rapeseed oil, vegetable oil. Mix it up. Nice mix. And then another baking tray lined again. And this will go into the hot oven for about 10 minutes, just so the onions um, change colour a bit, start to crisp up, and you'll see that they'll sort of shrink in size as well. So again, nice even layer. Put that in the oven, on the middle shelf. Questions. So yeah, um, you could use any mushrooms, absolutely. Um, I quite like the flavour of chestnut mushrooms, also quite cheap. Um, but yeah, any mushrooms are totally fine. Just regular white mushrooms do your job as well. And if you want to get more flavour in there, you could use some shiitake or some more exotic mushrooms as well. Um, so now I'm using some chestnuts. So these are whole chestnuts. They're already cooked. You've probably seen them in the, the shelves in the, in the supermarket this time of year, Christmas in particular. Um, 100, no, 90 grams of uh, chestnuts. If you, if you can't get hold of chestnuts, um, you could perhaps use something like chickpeas, it's going to have a similar sort of texture or um, some other bean or pulse. But I mean, you always see kind of bean burgers and, and that sort of thing, so I thought it's quite nice to use something a bit different. I really like flavour of chestnuts as well. And just crush them up in the bowl with your fingers. Teaspoon of plain flour. This is going to sort of bulk the burger slightly. You could use wholemeal flour as well, any flour really. If you if you 
don't want to eat gluten or you have an intolerance, you can also use a gram flour or, uh, or any flour in. And we're going to also add a bit of corn flour again, so about half a teaspoon of corn flour, and this is going to act as a, a binder. Again, you could use arrowroot, but it is less common. It's kind of made from um, the roots, starchy vegetable roots. And it's a South American thing, but it, you do see it in the, in the shops. Mushrooms are done. I made some a bit earlier so we don't have to be standing around. So you'll see a bit of colour on there. Um, and they have shrank in size. And they smell amazing the, the garlic and the herb. Blender. Um, my food processor broke um, yesterday, so I'm using my Nutribullet. It's not the best thing for this, but it will do the job. So just pop that mixture in there. Do have their limitations, but should do it. So it's going to be a bit noisy, a few pulses. Good shakedown. Blended, but it's still got some texture in there, there's still a few bits of mushroom and a few bit, bits of um, chestnut. And what you're aiming for is a sticky, moist um, consistency, but not too wet. show you. So you should be able to handle it easily uh, without it sort of sticking to your hands. If it is a little bit wet you can always add a little bit more flour. But it should be a sort of wet dough kind of consistency so you can see it's not sticking to my hands. I can handle it quite easily. I'm going to split this mixture in two be able to get a couple of pâtés out of this and then I'm just going to flatten it and really just form it into that burger pâté shape. So you can see I can handle it really easily and I can just form it nicely. You could, with this uh, quantity you could just make one huge burger if you wanted to. Nice burger shape. Do the same with this one. So we're not using any egg. Really don't need it. That little bit of corn flour in there is really enough. 
to bind it. There we go. So they're ready to go. Get a frying pan on. Nice high heat, medium high heat. I'm just gonna wash my hands. A little check what's going on in the oven. So the fries are starting to brown a little bit. We can give them a little shake, move them around. The ones towards the edge are going to brown quick, more quickly, so we can move those to the center. Pretty much there. Just pop them in for a couple more minutes. We've already got our mushroom mix here. So, we should probably make ketchup first actually. So this is a really simple and healthy ketchup, I would say. doesn't require any cooking. Um, I'm just blending some raw ingredients together. So it might not be to everybody's taste, uh, but I think it's a really good recipe. You probably want to use a good quality uh, tomato puree for this. And into my blender jug about six tablespoons of tomato puree. And then you could either use a, a garlic clove again, um, or half a garlic clove if you don't want it to be too overpowering. Um, but I'm just gonna use some garlic granules. I think they're really good in this, they're really good for um, sauces and purees and things. Packs full of flavour, so just a little sprinkle of that. Two teaspoons of um, balsamic to give it a little acidity. And then a bit of sweetness. some maple syrup, so no refined sugar, just a bit of maple syrup, so about a teaspoon of that. And then this is where you can really uh, make it your own, so you can add some chili in there, um, or different spices. I'm going to add just some mixed herbs in there and a bit of smoked paprika. Really like the flavour of that. So, not too much, just a, a pinch, really. And then again, nicely seasoned black pepper and salt. water to get it moving, so between about 50 millilitres of water, we'll see how that goes. Just going to check on the oven again. So our mushrooms are ready. So that's the mixture I put in earlier into the burgers. So we'd let that cool. Before we formed our, our pâtés. And look at the fries. So they're, they're looking pretty good as well. Again, just give them a little move around. 
flip them over. You could use a spatula if you want. You don't want to get your, your fingers in there. Last. Again, in the neutral bullet, which is fine for this this task. Okay, so it's really that simple. You've got a nice thick ketchup. Bit of a little taste. I think that's really delicious. Obviously, adjust your salt levels, or if you want to add a bit more sweetness, a bit more maple syrup. Most ketchups you buy in the shop are full of sugar, so we're used to a very, very sweet ketchup. I think that's pretty good. Ready to go. So now our frying pan. Just check if there's any more questions. No, that's good for now. So get our pan on, nice medium heat. We're going to use a bit of uh, rapeseed oil this time. Not too much, about a tablespoon, maybe a bit less. And then in with our pate. It should start sizzling straight away. I'm going to cook that for a couple of minutes. On each side, we'll get a nice brown, crispy um, exterior, and it should be nice and moist in the middle, just like a, a burger, a regular burger. I like it super thick fries, they're looking really good. Jam lettuce. Finally, chop a bit of that. And then I've got a lovely big beef tomato. So just a lovely big chunk of that to put on top. Then also some red onion. Gherkin would be good as well. Forgot to pick up some pickled gherkins. Well, that's lovely on a burger. It's a nice, maybe a bit thinner than that. Nice sort of thin slice of uh, onion. Burgers. Get a spatula. Just flip them over. So some nice colour going on there. Don't know if you can see that. Some lovely browning. Just going to cook that other side. Perhaps take a, a little less time, maybe a, a minute or so.
then we can start to plate up. So if you want a, a burger bun or something like that, I um, just got these little sourdough rolls. Quite nice. And now I'm just gonna slice them in. Slice them up. These are, I pop them in the oven for a few minutes just to crisp them up. So use a, a brioche bun. Some people love a brioche bun with a burger. And you can get vegan ones as well these days. So obviously they have a, a lot of milk, butter in there. But going with the, the sourdough today. So pop the pate on, and then you can start layering it up. Bit of ketchup. And then some lettuce. And then our big slice of beef, tomato, and onion. aren't quite there, probably need another 5-10 minutes, however I did make some earlier, so pop those on the side, so you can see they're nice and crispy, got quite a bit of colour going on there, and then a bit of ketchup on the side. Also put some mayo. Um, did think about making a mayo in, in this uh, class with some aquafaba, which is uh, chickpea juice. Um, but I think the, the recipes on our website is a really simple uh, vegan mayo. It doesn't lack any uh, texture or anything, or any flavour as well. It tastes tastes just like the real thing. So there we go. Our fries, our ketchup, and our burger. So let's have a little taste of the burger. Mm. Really good. There's so much flavour in that in that pate. With only just a, a few simple ingredients. I don't think you'd miss meat at all with that. And you're not using any sort of um, textured soya pieces or anything like that. It's more like a processed um, pate. Simple to make, easy. So there you go. Hope you can try it at home as well. Let's just see if there's any questions or if you want to send some questions now. So Jackie's just said you can find vegan brioche buns at the moment in uh, Aldi. So that's a really good tip. Um, Aldi are really good for, for some things. Um, not everything, I don't find, like, if you want, especially if you want uh, specialist ingredients, but they're definitely changing, they're, they're getting more things in there. And like I say, you can find vegan options everywhere these days. So that's a really good tip. Um, if anyone wants to send any more questions, please do now. If not, um, I will wish you a good day and um, hope you enjoy your veganuary. And uh, let me know um, how your burgers go. Um, 
have a look on the website. We've got loads more recipes on there, including these ones and lots of other burgers as well. We've got some black bean burgers, which are particularly good in the summer on the barbecue. And we've got loads of ideas for veganizing classic recipes, um, all your sort of pies and, and, um, and soups. And uh, we, we do nut cheeses and all sorts of things. So have a good look. Have a look at the questions again. No, no more questions. If you want to send me a question, you can um, email me. I'm ollie at vegetarianforlife.org.uk uh, or you can get in touch with the company directly. So I hope you've enjoyed this session. I uh, hope to see you again soon. So, bye-bye.